Hello, welcome, it's great to be back. Now you can't turn around these days without hearing the term AI. It's in everything. It won't be long before it's in breakfast cereal the way it's going. Um, we had a presentation at work about AI and about neural networks which underpin AI. It was a very good presentation and it brought to mind, it reminded me about the uh, time in, uh, back about 2011 when I first started hearing about neural networks. It was fascinating because the neural network is how the brain works. It's a, a bunch of neurons that are connected together. And this was a theory around that the connections and the weights between the neurons were the thing that actually created thinking and decision making and all the rest of it. And then we started to translate that into computers and get them, although not really designed to do that sort of work, and um, only the latest chips these days, which are beginning to be based or designed to actually take that in mind. But we're sort of wedging the neural nets algorithms into you know, modern computer chips, which are binary and therefore totally different. But anyway, that was a way around it. So I started to investigate it and I thought it was very interesting. So a neuron is basically a whole bunch of connections. And if you did a Google search back in 2011, this was the type of image that you'd see. So these are, these are the neurons and these are the weights. And this is a schematic view of a neural network. Uh, it looks a little bit complicated, but it's not actually that complicated. It's just a bunch of weights and each connection is connected to the neurons via a weight. And so you can either increase the influence of the previous neuron or decrease the influence of a previous neuron. These weights are added together or, or go through another sort of transfer function. In my case, it's add because I wanted to keep things simple. And then finally, they're either uh, pushed out or they're not pushed out via a trigger function, which I used a basic, you know, if then uh, statement and basically said if they were above this threshold, then they give an output. If they were below, they didn't. It's simple as that. Now, that's a neural network and a neural network is pretty useless without any training because it will just do the one thing. Whatever those numbers that you set in to seed the network, those are the numbers that will be used to actually create an output and they will never change without training. The traditional sort of most popular way of training a neural network is backpropagation. And here's the formula for backpropagation. Now in 2011, I sort of took one look at this and just couldn't get my head around it. I run for the hills. And I started to think about, there must be another way of doing this. There must be something else that I can use. And that's when I started looking at natural selection. In the natural world, an organism gets to propagate and therefore create the next generation. If they're successful, if they're not successful, they become a dead end and none of their offspring survives or they don't survive long enough to produce offspring. So natural selection could be used. So we have a bit of a plan coming together now. Uh, we can create a very simple neural network. We can drive, use that to drive a very simple creature in a simulated environment. At the end of a specific period of time, call it a round, we can score these creatures and the ones with the best score can go on to create the next generation. We can make random modifications to all of their offspring. So they're all slightly different, but based around the same parent. In our case, single sexed, but parent. So there you go. Um, so this is our neural network. You can see it's a basic four by four grid. If we work from the inputs on the left. Now you may be thinking, right, great, we've got uh, inputs on the left, but what happens if we don't want to use them all? And we've got like four inputs, we might want to only use two. Well, we can just ignore them basically. The whole point about neural networks is they don't know what their inputs are and they don't know what the outputs are. They're just taking in values and computing it across. So we start with the left, each one of those you can imagine has a number. And then the next row, but each single neuron, you take all of those numbers via the weights of the connections and you multiply and add them together. So it's very, very simple. You can march from left to right, creating all the values as you go. You could do it in a spreadsheet, it's so easy. Um, and that gives us our neural network. Now we need a creature to actually like running a simulation. So this is Colin, Colin the cockroach. He's useful because he has two antenna, which we can use for distance to the left and distance to the right. We don't have to worry about computer vision or anything. So we have two inputs and we can have two outputs because we can have how fast we're moving forward, uh, how much we're turning, 
either left or right. So we have one value for turn or steer and another value for speed. So we've got two inputs and two outputs. Um, so this is the graphically intensive representation of Colin I chose to use. Uh, obviously we're doing a simulation and we want quite a lot of these rendered in the environment. We don't need to uh, overtax things. And this is Colin in his simulated environment. Um, you can see he's a bit bored now. He's just sat there on his own not doing anything. So for a bit of fun I thought I'd electrify the boundaries. Uh, so if any of the creatures touch the sides they turn red in the, represent in the simulation and they don't take any further part in the round. At the end of the round they get deducted points for being dead uh, and they don't like I say participate anymore. Now that doesn't mean they don't get to create the next generation um, it just depends on the scoring and how we actually score things. The scoring system is based on traveling a straight line so if the creatures constantly turn in arcs then they don't get any score for moving. Uh, the reason for this is because the neural network is seeded and because we have a steer value um, they could quite easily just be given a random number for steering and moving forward. So we want to score them for doing something interesting and so I scored just for going in a straight line. Now the green creature is the one that's currently in the lead so if you see one in green it's because they're the current leader. Uh, and at the end of the round, any red creatures that have hit the side and died get two points deducted, which is quite a large amount in this particular scoring system. The top five creatures are used to produce the next round's cohort, um, and they're the ones who get to reproduce. We also throw a few random ones in there just in case they come up with some sort of new values that uh, create some interesting behaviours. So let's have a look at the simulations and see how we did. So this is the first round and as you can see nothing unusual really is happening, a few have run straight to the side and died and <clears throat> you can also see why I selected the scoring method of going in a straight line because the random values naturally mean that majority of uh, creatures are, are turning around around the centre and just keep going around and around. There was an example there where one I was actually doing some interesting behaviour but because he wasn't travelling in a straight line he never actually scored anything. Uh, the second round is interesting in that only one or two, two in fact, creatures died. So only two creatures touch the side. The majority of them stop before they get to the side and actually start to turn. That's intriguing already just from a very simple neural net, in fact we're just doing additions. Um, we're getting interesting results because they're not really dying. Only one creature in round three died through touching the side and he almost got away with it. The rest of them are, are moving to the side and stopping before they hit the side. How interesting. So without anything, they're going to the side and stopping. Now you'll notice there's a few creatures in the middle who spin around aimlessly. So they are probably the five random ones that we throw in. Um, and you know one extra one but all the ones are dry from the decent ones all the ones who are actually learning are doing something interesting here we've got a creature that again is doing something really interesting they're rapidly turning when they get to the edge oh they just died but they were doing something really interesting but they weren't scoring very much because they weren't going in a straight line they were going in curved arcs now round six this is where something gets interesting we have the creature here in green who's stopping at the edges, turning 180 degrees and going back in a straight line. His score is vastly superior to any that's been before, which means, of course, that the next generation, all of his offspring are going to be doing the same. And so we get a pattern start to emerge where all the creatures now are getting some um, useful behaviour of travelling in a very straight line and turning and not dying at the edges. Again, hardly any creatures, zero so far in this round, have died through touching the edges. And yet they're getting good scores. Now look at this, we're on round eight, and after eight generations, we've already got some really interesting, almost naturalistic-like behaviour. So let's stop for a second and think about this. We've got a brain, which is just adding numbers together and checking if it's over a threshold. And we have a learning system which is saying, just pick the best from the last round. How simple could you get? And yet, we have something that looks almost like nature, almost like in insects that have learned not to touch the sides. They're all moving together and 
changing, through, you know, through their environment. I, I think that's amazing. I absolutely am gobsmacked with the results from such a simple system. It's intriguing and amazing. It's no wonder that AI's exploded the way it has done currently. But just remember that the training and scoring system is the most important part. If we mess that up or if we um, don't look at our training material properly, it's no wonder that these systems are starting to get AI bias in one way or another. So bear that in mind when you come across all that subject in the future. So there we are. Amazing. Well, I think it's amazing anyway. What an amazing result for something so simple and such a simple system. Bizarre. Right. Thank you very much for your time. Please like, subscribe if you've got anything out of this video. Obviously leave comments. I've added a buy me a coffee link if you're feeling generous. Thank you very much. All the best.